hey yo what is up fpg fam further here and for today's video it is time to provide you my first impressions my early thoughts on saki now that she's on the global side for tower fantasy so i've been using her in multiple different team comps at a0 in both her excited flow and her silent flow stance her tank and dps stance and i wanted to go ahead and give you my first impressions my early thoughts on what i think about this simulacrum now by no means is this an in-depth review i'm going to go ahead and provide that video at a later time after i do some more extensive testing and just to give you a quick background i was able to pull a copy of saki and i have the ability to unlock the a1 now i haven't unlocked the a1 just yet to test it out because i really wanted to test out the a0 i wanted to use saki at a0 in different situations to see if a0 was viable because prior to saki being released on the global side there was multiple sources stating that a1 was a must-have for saki and i wanted to see if that held true and one of my early thoughts one of my early first impressions for saki just to get it out of the way really quickly is that a0 feels extremely good on saki right now my early thoughts is a1 is not necessary now that might be early to say because i haven't used the a1 and i'll be using it here shortly but A0 feels great in different team comps and different situations. Uh, and the reason being is because Saki's kit feels complete. Saki's kit feels balanced. Uh, it feels well-rounded. It feels cohesive. It feels synergistic because she's able to do damage, in my opinion. She's able to uh, have utility with a lot of passive DPS, I should say. And it really plays into how well Saki's kit is. I think at A0, she feels extremely extremely viable now, before we jump more into it i did want to go ahead and give you a quick background on what i have on my saki currently so i was able to get her weapon leveled up to 130 which was nice as you can see a0 haven't unlocked the a1 just yet and if we take a look at the matrices i have the two-piece saki so if you haven't seen my pulling video i implore you check it out after this one i'll leave it at the end of this video for you to easily click on also while you're at it um, go ahead and just drop a like it just helps the channel out tremendously tells youtube that this video is pretty decent you kind of like it helps boost it into the algorithm also if you're new here or if you haven't done it already go ahead and consider subscribing join the fbg fam we would love to have you stick around we're on our way to 40k and we're going to be coming out with many more saki videos but i digress so i have the 2p saki and i have the 2p samir now i went with this one because it's what i would consider the best if you're going 2p saki and the reason being is because you get the frost resonance triggering and you get some extra damage for frost and then samir just increases damage progressively by one percent upon hitting a target so it's really good for the damage build really good for the dps side of saki as well as tank side you could use it for both and i think it would just be best for what i have right now and then i may try and go for the four piece at a later time i do plan on maybe trying to go for the a3 as well just for the skin i mentioned that in my pulling video the skin is fantastic the a3 i don't think is necessary by any means i think it's going to be useful of course because increased damage for the dps stance is really nice and then a five second reduction on the cooldown for the tank side i think it's great but i don't think it's necessary um the a1 is really good as well i need to test it out to see how good it truly is but i think a0 once again just hearkening back to my very first uh, point that i made is that a0 feels great i've been using her in this comp which i would consider my tank comp right here with meryl uh saki and frig and this feels fantastic let me really let me state this really quickly both sides the silent flow and the excited flow feels great i love both stances let me know in the comments down below what you guys think if you have saki i adore both stances um now if i was to state what i'm leaning more towards i would have to probably say the excited flow the dps stance just because i think it hits so tremendously hard and that off passive damage that you're getting with the sword flying around even when you're using different weapons like one of my most favorite things to do is to have that sword flying around while i'm multi-slashing with brig it's just incredible it's one of those things that's just very satisfying to to have going on um, so I really like that, but the tank stance is extremely nice as well because you are tanking like none other. You are getting so much healing back. Uh, the thing about Saki is she's so well-rounded in my opinion uh, because of those two stances, and you can really just decide what you want to do. And the two stances feel very different, and I like that. They don't feel similar whatsoever. You know when you're tanking, and you know when you're doing DPS, and I like that about Saki. There's a very clear distinction between the two and i enjoy that so 
Um, this is the tank team that I've been using right now. And then for my DPS side for the Excited Flow, I will simply switch out Meryl for most likely Claudia. I've been using Claudia in this team for the buffering and to get the DPS, and it's been working out fine. And you'll see that in the gameplay. But obviously, the more preferred choice is probably going to be Subasa. But I pulled Subasa late, and I haven't had the chance to build her up. Resources are extremely low, as you can see. I have zero gold to speak of. Um, I, I just don't have any resources left after getting this weapon to 130 and then investing into the matrices to get it to level 70. I tried to get this one to level 70, but it just wasn't having it. Ran out of resources, so I'm lacking in the resource department. But uh, that is my tank stance and then my DPS stance for right now until I can, you know, make some changes. But I, all in all, I have to say Saki is incredible. She does it all. She's tanking. She's healing. She's doing damage, and if you were afraid of Saki doing damage, you shouldn't. She is doing the damage. Her discharge is satisfying to go ahead and proc. Her skill is fantastic, whether it's in the tank stance or in the DPS stance, the excited flow or the silent flow. Either one feels extremely satisfying. Um, it's very strong. The blocks, I love doing the blocks. You just are blocking hits, you're getting healing, and you're counterattacking, and you're doing damage back. And then when you're in excited flow, you just have that sword flying around doing passive damage. You're doing a lot of damage yourself. And what I like to do with Saki is do a few basic attacks and then do the branch attack. Uh, because I think that's where I'm getting the most damage output. Once again, I need to do some more testing and use her more extensively. But for right now, that's what I feel is doing the best. And then, um, you know, in the tank stance, you have Meryl doing tremendous amount of damage. Um, if you have some stars on Meryl, you're also getting... Uh, increased shatter you're getting HP back it's just a very self-sustaining team here with Saki and Meryl because uh, they're tanking so much they're getting so much healing back is very self-sustaining and then Meryl doing the damage herself and then if you have a3 you have a shield it's just pretty pretty incredible and on my Meryl I have uh, the zero two piece so I have another uh, shield here also after I do the discharge so it's just fantastic and then if you have the a5 you're just doing even more damage and then, of course, Frigg is just kind of the, I would say, uh, epicenter of this team, the core, uh, because Frigg allows for this team to just operate at high efficiency with buffing the Frost, uh, increasing the Shatter. There's just so much going on. And then you pop Frigg out when you have that sword flying around or you pop Frigg out um, when you have a shield and you're just going crazy. And then if you have the 4K trait for Frigg, you have hyper body, so you don't have to worry about anything. This team is incredible and then like i mentioned for my dps stance i just go ahead and switch meryl for claudia at the time and now we have a very low cooldown damage reduction immunity um, with the buffering if you have a1 and that's just going to play in the, the dps stance so now we're doing even more damage we have the sword flying around and then we have frig multi slashing everywhere uh, i really like this team it's very cohesive and you are able to get that switch in, switch out play style. So you're doing incredible burst damage um, because you just bring out Saki to do the discharge, do the skill, maybe a few branch attacks. And then you switch into Frigg and you're multi-slashing around with Fimble Winter. And you have that sword flying around you as well, doing passive damage. And now you're all buffed by Claudia. You could even proc the Grievous to be able to do even more damage. Um, and then you can go ahead and do her skill. So you have the damage reduction, discharge to get the immunity. I don't know. It's just very cohesive. Uh, it's very synergistic. And I've been having a great time with this team. And once again, I have to say A0 Saki just feels absolutely fantastic. At the moment, I just don't feel A1 is necessary. But of course, A1 is going to be great because now you're having uh, the cooldown for all your weapons. So you're going to be pro proccing skills, especially with Claudia with that low skill cooldown. You're going to be able to proc those skills uh, extremely often, and you're going to be able to get this. And I can only see this being as a great benefit. So A1 is probably a very nice addition and a very nice boost to Saki's uh, overall viability. Um, but I, I, for right now, I just don't feel as, it's, it, as if it's a must-have, uh, in my opinion. But I'm definitely going to go ahead and test it out and see what it's all about and give you my thoughts on A0, A1 Saki and the main differences and how big of a jump it is. Um, but for right now, A0 feels great. So that is just my early first impressions. I know I was just kind of all over the place in today's video. I kind of wanted to give you guys my, my raw thoughts, not be 
uh, too scripted on this one. When I do my in-depth review, I promise to be a little more scripted, a little more uh, to the point on certain things. But uh, all in all, I just think Saki's great. I think she's fantastic. I think she's very well-rounded. I think she can do it all. And she kind of fills whatever niche you need to be filled. So if you're, you know, not doing enough damage, you go with the excited flow and you're, you're going to be able to do even more damage. If you're not tanking well enough or, or getting enough healing back, go into the tank stance and you're going to be tanking very well and just blocking hits and doing what you want to do. All right. Um, and once again, I love the distinction between the two. It, you could tell the difference and, and that's something that I appreciate. So Saki, all in all, first impressions, early thoughts, she's phenomenal. She's absolutely fantastic. And if you're a Frost main, Saki's a great pickup. But I will end on this note. And if you're still here, thank you so much for the support. I will end on this note. Do I think Saki's a must-have for the Frost team? Not... It, this might be a hot take and maybe a bit controversial. But not. I don't necessarily think Saki is a must-have for the Frost team. If you have Frigg, if you don't have Frigg, then of course I think Saki's a must-have because then you get the Frost Resonance, and then she becomes the core integral part for the team. But if you have Frigg, I don't think Saki's necessarily a must-have. And here's the reason why. Let me explain. If you think about it, the Frost team before Saki was arguably the best team in the game. Outside, if you had multiple, multiple stars on your Flame team, if you had a wailed out Flame team, they're obviously the best because they're just outputting nutty amount of damage but if that's not the case if you're just a normie <laughs> if you're just a normal individual that has normal stars uh you know a2 and below uh on your on your flame team comp then i would have to say frost is arguably the best one especially for free to play players and, and light spenders arguably the best team in the game and that's because of the frig meryl subasa comp and that comp is just so incredibly strong and is able to clear content without any problem uh, and able to push bygone floors without any problems. So I don't think Saki necessarily is needed because the Frost team was already so well balanced and so strong already without her. It, it wasn't necessary to have Saki. Now what I will say, however, is that Saki greatly increases this team and makes this team far more optimal. And you get a lot of value with adding Saki to the team because she just raises... Um, all of their viability and just makes the team uh, extremely strong just as a whole so uh, is Saki a must-have for the Frost team I don't necessarily think so is she a, a fantastic addition she's a phenomenal addition and, and fantastic once again with the disclaimer asterisk if you don't have rig uh, or if you do have rig excuse me if you don't have rig then yes Saki I think is a, a must-have uh, but in, in this situation with Lin probably coming right afterwards um, you know, if you have Frigg and Saki wasn't a simulacrum that you absolutely had to have, um, you may be able to get away with skipping her and, and go for Lin uh, and be able to focus not only on your Frost team, but also focus on your secondary team, whether that be Flame Volt or Physical, whatever the case may be. Um, so anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it on that note and get on out of here. Oh, as always, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, your early first impressions of Saki. Uh, once again, be on the lookout for my in-depth review. Also, be on the lookout for my comparison of A0 and A1. That might come out first and then my in-depth review later down the road. If you have any questions for me, leave it in the comments down below. I'll be more than happy to answer it to the best of my abilities. But I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Remember to stand out, be different, and have fun. Go further beyond in everything that you do. My name is Cody, but you can call me further. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.